Hi, I'm Mark O'Hanna from PhoneDog.com, and last week we talked about the Xbox One versus the PlayStation 4 in both design, hardware, and overall operating system of both consoles. This week we talk about something a little closer to every single gamer's heart. We talk about the controllers, the app marketplace, and last but not least, the social networking on both PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Controllers are one serious part to a gaming console. They are your primary input to interact with not only the games, but the whole operating system. The Sony DualShock 3 was a massive disappointment for a lot of serious gamers. It was too small, too finicky, and was very overshadowed by the much larger and more comfortable Xbox 360 controller. This year around, the DualShock 4 has grown up and matured into a new controller of the next generation. For starters, it's much larger than before and the grips have been extended to feel larger and more comfortable. It's not exactly as large as the Xbox One controller, but it feels like Sony has found the right ideal shape to fall right into the hands of all sorts of people. I'm still not a huge fan of the button layout, but all of them have become second nature in a matter of hours of playing a game, and that's pretty impressive. The only issue we found is the battery life. It only lasts about 5 hours, and that's a lot for a lot of people. 5 hours is a long time, but when you're a serious gamer, you'll either have an Xbox One, or just a few DualShock 4 controllers ready to go when one dies. It really should have been longer battery life. The Xbox One controller looks identical to the Xbox 360 controller. I suppose it's for good reason. The controller feels very familiar to the hands, especially from a previous Xbox 360 owner. The buttons are laid out very nicely, but the new bumpers just feel a tad too stiff to press down. The new D-pad has shorter throws and feels much more organic than the previous D-pad. Sadly, the pros end there. The battery life, while it's very good in comparison to the DualShock, still relies on AA batteries unless you opt in to buy a rechargeable battery pack. Though the battery life is still quite good, over 15 hours to a single pair of AA batteries. In my past video between these two controllers, I did favor the Xbox One controller because it had a rumble feature and that you can switch your batteries at a moment's notice when your battery does die. While I do still favor the Xbox One controller because I'm a previous Xbox 360 owner, I do think that the Sony PlayStation 4 has come a long way in terms of controller. The DualShock 4 is miles better than the DualShock 3. Now we'll switch gears to another major factor of the next generation consoles. We now all live in an age where we can get instant satisfaction through online content. Instead of going to GameStop, and picking up a new Battle of Battlefield, now we're able to have it delivered right to our system. Now, marketplaces are super popular, especially on the mobile and PC side of technology. Now they're evolving to house blockbuster games on both of these consoles. Let's start with the PlayStation 4. The marketplace here is quite simple and very, very clean, yet it's highly effective in the way it delivers content. Searching through categories is just as simple as you expect from Sony. Everything is pretty snappy, and the new added graphics and colors just make the experience feel more up-to-date than PlayStation's 3 text menu. On the other hand, the Xbox One uses a version of Windows 8 Store to deliver all of their games. It's a very useful system since it had a long time to grow and mature before it launched on the Xbox One. Searching through categories is just as easy, but the added little applications and features may confuse a few who are not used to the store. Also, another fact to keep in mind is the Xbox One features way more applications outside of the gaming world. For example, the PlayStation 4 has Netflix, BBC iPlayer, Love Film, The Man 5, and another small selection of games and apps. Xbox One, however, has Netflix, Hulu, NFL Game Time, Redbox Instant, ESPN, YouTube, FX Now, Muzu TV, Crackle, Fox Now, and a lot of others. Now, the PS4 will get more applications in the meantime, but the Xbox One does show more promise in terms of other third-party app developing. Plus, did I forget to mention the Xbox One also connects to your TV box? Yeah, you can really see the difference of market share between these two. Sadly, the PlayStation 4's application feature is still quite vague, while the Xbox One's ambitions are very, very clear. Now we get to one of the largest factors when purchasing a gaming console. It's the social networking. While that term may seem like a new Twitter or Facebook, Xbox Live and the PlayStation Network are one of the largest selling factors for both consoles. That's kind of why the Xbox 360 was greatly preferred over the PlayStation 3. Even though it still costs money to have, it was just better. Now, Sony has leveled the playing field of PlayStation Plus. It's completely worth the ticket of admission. Now, you have a much better experience interacting with your friends and parties and online multiplayer. Sony has taken a huge interest in making their network compete and maybe even exceed Microsoft's great platform. Added benefits like free games and full game free trials are added benefits with the new PlayStation Plus. Again, completely worth the ticket of admission. Another added feature is a what's new feature which is similar to HTC's Blink Feed. It basically connects you with everything that's happened with yourself and your friends on PSN. 
Xbox Live was already great, but now with Windows 8, it's even better. It just looks like any other Windows 8 platform with all your social networking options right in front of you and all the great live tiles. Then you notice a similar feature that shows you what's going on with your friends. You still have the ability to have parties and video chats, but you also notice Skype integration right from the home screen. Xbox Live, while it doesn't have the free games benefit as PlayStation Plus, offers a great online gaming experience, and with already trusted servers, they may just give better experiences for those who really enjoy online gaming. But the one thing I see most of all is the branching out of the Xbox from just games to a whole new social media device. Not only does it allow you to play amazing games, but it does that while delivering your TV, online media, news, and just about anything that goes live on the Microsoft Store. Something I truly want to have on the Sony PlayStation 4, and I really hope Sony is coming with something. In the end, these two consoles are the next generation powerhouses. Both deliver very unique experiences, and both would make great choices for any household. If you are looking for the one device solution for the home, while the Xbox One may not be perfect, it does just about everything we have asked from it. But if you require the utmost in gaming performance, then the more future-proof Sony PlayStation 4 may be the better choice, and oddly, the less expensive one. For more great content, visit PhoneDog.com. But for now, my name is Marco Hanna, and I will see you guys in the next video.